Today, my plan begins. The 16 regions of Ghana are bustling with untapped riches. Western region boasts of $412 billion in mineral resources. Volta region holds $192.6 billion. Eastern region holds $174 billion US dollars. Together, our regions possess trillions in wealth. Ghanaians, this is our divine inheritance. Why should we sell our raw materials for a pittance? Why let others profit while we languish in poverty? This narrative must end now. And the 16th Regional Industrial Revolution is the answer. The 16th Regional Industrial Revolution represents a groundbreaking shift in Ghana's economic paradigm, one that aims to harness the untapped potential of each of Ghana's 16 regions. This ambitious initiative Exactly right. 97 days to election 2024 in the Republic of Ghana, and you're watching a historic first ever virtual policy launch. Uh, the speaker is Nana Kwame Bediako of the New Force Movement. And before, during the break, uh, somebody was asking me, so when are we going to hear something in any of the Ghanaian languages? Uh, <laughs> did you cover that base? Listen, you know, I'm a very proud Ghanaian, because I can't be anything else but Ghanaian. And when you're Ghanaian, you have to remember this country has a lot of dialects. Out of the 16 regions, we thought of every single region. And there is a transcribed language on every regional industrialization policy. I mean, maybe I should play some for you to see. From Volta to Ashanti to you name it, to Upper West, Upper East... We thought of everyone. This policy is not for me or us. It's for Ghana. It's for the people of this country. And that's why we've had them in thought. And it's theirs. We want them to know the cost, the value, the jobs, everything that that land owns. They're part of it. It's part of the equity. So please, maybe we should play it for, for you to get familiar sure. with it. Volta Lake, region, all right, um, Nana, we're going to continue with Pillar 9. I think it's quite an interesting one. Yeah, so yeah. Take it away. Is. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kafui. It's almost been an hour and some change into the evening since we started this presentation of our developmental agenda and the policy. But now I'm about to get you into Pillar 9, the apostolic governance, the 12 ministries. I mean, apostolic governance, it's, it's a title, it's some title right here. But it's the 12 ministries. They say less is more. Our government will be the leanest, most efficient in the history of African politics. We present to you the apostolic governance. One president, 12 ministers. Create a lean government that will be responsible for the 12 pillars. 
Now let me start. I'm going to press this. Like when you go into one of this. Maybe we can press one of them. And um, let's pick one. I'll take you through a few of the ministerial mandates. Because I think it's very important that you know what they have to do. So we start with Ministry of Finance. Over the years, there has been a lot of judgment deaths. A lot of salary shortage. A lot of pain and pain and pain without returns. We realize that, not to put blames on anyone, that the Ministry of Finance is struggling. So our mandate is to make the Ministry of Finance become an investor and a developer for the nation building. It should be their responsibility. It, they should be accountable for it. You know, we want them to be able to go to the sovereign fund, the IMF, and ask for $10 billion for a project that would be supervised, monitored, controlled by us, our investment, going into industrial, going into commercial, going into retail. We should be a part of it, and we should control it. And there should be returns. We should not just use our Ministry of Finance for spending. <laughs> we should use our Ministry of Finance for investment. We have to purchase for right purposes. That brings returns. The returns that will pay the salary of the workers of this country. And that's how it should circulate, just to stabilize our economy. I can pick maybe trade as well. Well, trade, it's... It's been like a, a, a dormant ministry for me over the past decade. And the mandate for trade is to make Ghana uh, one of the biggest African exporters. The aim of having all of these 16 industrial, uh, 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 regional industrial revolution and having a development in minerals and, and, and agro processing and packaging and food and this and that is to be able to trade. Now, let's, let's think about uh, AFTER. AFTER is a big project. That's 54 countries of Africa have registered with AFTER. What were they thinking? They don't have the resources. They don't have the products to distribute among these 54 countries. Where was the product going to come from? Were we going to import it? Or somebody else was going to come and put these plants in this country and trade in Africa? Ghana stands to be the flagship the star, the black star of Africa that will have the power of distribution. They have the waters connected to the coast that can, can just distribute regionally and continentally. And we feed in that gap for after. It's a great opportunity uh, for us. Uh, we should look at Ministry of Agriculture. The mandate for Ministry of Agriculture is to establish the National Seedling Bank. Uh, you know, and an industrial irrigation systems to support it. But we have the National Seedling Bank. Like we already said in the reserves, we will have a hundred, a century of food guaranteed for us. And it would be the mandate of Ministry of Agriculture to see to it that this is being monitored, supervised, managed, controlled, and for the public and the citizens of Ghana, to get jobs out of this mandate, for the citizens of Ghana to create wealth out of this mandate. But that's what I believe the ministries should be doing. For these 12 apostles should make sure the pillars don't break, because this pillars is going to hold this nation for the next 500 years until greater minds will come together and enhance it again. I mean, we can go through some of the ministries, more of it, and just share the mandate of our policies. But of course, we're going to make sure that uh, there would be the digital copies that it would go to millions of people as well. But the mandate of maybe a Ministry of Interior to secure the right salary and structures and benefits for security service, like police, fire service, prisoners, or prison, uh, prison, prison officers, uh, immigration officers. I mean... If we want to mi minimize corruption, the first thing we need to think about is to give value back to our people. Once they have value, the right salary, there is no way they would like to take pure water for bride. But, 
you know we just need to give value to our people and we need the ministry of interior to have this mandate and take it serious that we're moving from the low income world that we live to the middle income world you know creating and putting the right structures in place for everybody to get the fair share of salary and build the economy right don't forget taxes will also help the country the more jobs we create the more value we bring and so that's ministry of interior maybe i should take you through one or two but i still have three pillars to take you through so i'm going to take you through this ninth ninth pillar which is the apostolic governance and then take you back to the pillars but there are more and more you have 12 of this we are here to build an army of dedicated Ghanaians who will manage this great nation. Ladies and gentlemen, to lead is to serve. And I'm here to serve you. Thank you. Now I'm going to take you out of the apostolic governance and I'm going to take you to one of the biggest pillars. Surprisingly, I guess the title alone, Ghana raising Ghana's first 50 billion dollars I mean this is kind of figures when you call it's like how is Ghana ever gonna make this money because we're only struggling over three billion and we barely get it so how are we gonna raise 50 billion yes we are going to raise 50 billion says who says the young man standing in front of you this vision and this policy is gonna make it happen if you ever wondered where all this money will come from, well, this is it. And it's very simple. So we decided a collaboration between the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Interior come together for one purpose, to empower the immigration services of this country and create the citizenship package to monetize Ghanaian citizenship only for Africans. Now I know that this vision and this idea is going to save Ghana, but it's the phase one of it. The target is one million Africans to invest 50,000 in Ghana in exchange for Ghanaian passport. They can invest in our gold. They can invest in our oil. They can invest in our agro processing. They can invest in all the things I've told you because Ghana will have the biggest, most booming economy and is going to attract Africans to come in this country. But they will also want to be a part of Ghana's legacy. And so we have to take advantage of that and raise the 50 billion from Africans by Africans. This very policy marks a history today because we would not need the Western world to provide for us anymore now that we know we can raise a thousand times more than they give us. But remember, this is not only about the money. The grand agenda in this is introducing African unification. It's going to start from Ghana. We would be the first people to start the project USA, United States of Africa, by people joining us and we welcome, welcoming them through our borders, but also they will be investing on our land. See, we are about to initiate a borderless continent and trade will come through, investment will come through. Our neighboring countries will join us. We are about to join hands. We are about to have an entangled economy that cannot be broken anymore, that cannot be separated anymore. See, we have been regionally separated by borders, and internally we have been separated by tribes. Once now you have the water connecting, we are coming together by tribes. Once now we have the borderless continent, we are coming together by countries this is about to end we are going to import our talents and skills from across Africa everywhere in fact Nigeria I know you're watching me Nigeria we are coming for you 
I know just you Nigeria if I decide that one million of you should invest in my country passport you will bring the money in five days to Ghana you would give us 50 billion more and I promise you we will trade with you in gold in oil and we will make ourselves become successful because we're going to raise this capital amongst ourselves so remember when I come to power I will be the first one to invite these Africans to truly become a part of Ghana as African and raise this 50 billion but guess what there's a phase two of this money raising and it's a grand invitation of people of African descendants history will tell the rest now we either move forward together or we stand still separated and it's one of my favorite pillars Ten, the tenth pillar it's just it's just a great news for us Ghana it's just a great news we found a solution now let's go to pillar 11 pillar 11 is interesting also and it's national security and data protection I mean we have national security but we should remember this data is the new blood and we must secure it we need the data that's why we're building the data centers that's why we're minting that's why we're building the blockchain and the web 3 the web 3 to store the data and information of this continent our aim is to build Ghana's first web 3 platform to support the national sovereign wealth fund migrate all national data to a national web 3 platform and store our health records I mean to build this government blockchain it should have the department to really store our health records our academic records our stocks of commodities and agro reserves on the blockchain network our gold reserves our land reserves all the reserves see you could see that these pillars are supporting the ministries and now corruption will be hard for one to commit because we're creating wealth creating jobs amongst ourselves and we don't need to rob ourselves anymore but we need to have these platforms to support our stocks and our records see we have to make the government transactions data and information transparent this system is going to make it impossible to edit you can't enter again if we have 10 million ounces of gold we have 10 million ounces of gold if it's reserves no one can change it <laughs> you can't edit it we have to make this a national data and information base that is also publicly accessible that is the free country that we want to live with such an economic freedom that's what we need at this point transparency and accountability is a necessity we need it as a country now if the government wants to know you or the government wants to know about you then you must know about the government and that's what this our new Ghana is going to do for us transparency bring real account accountability and responsibility pillar 12 we're coming close to the end of this presentation and pillar 12 is the pillar at the cornerstone of this country that a lot of people cannot see the value of it and we did not invest in it right so we're now becoming victims to the international world for those who have trained us and made us better and that's sports and the creative industry well i know that ghana has breeded a lot of stars musicians footballers but how many of them you can probably count them our approach to the sports and creative industry is ownership and control 
we need this we need ownership and control we have to own the academies own the music catalogs and own the distribution power how are we going to do this let's start by the sports i mean first of all everybody watches football from outside every day and they, they, they actually depend on it but hey we can invest in the sports sector basketball long tennis and boxing and etc well this is our plan first we're going to build 16 multifunctional sports academies in all the regions because we don't know where ronaldo is we don't know where messi is you can find them in any of the region and therefore we're not going to discriminate we make sure that there are academies to search for these talents everywhere in ghana and we're going to nurture them grow them own them and they also have to own us now what happens when we build this multi-functional sports academies you see it attracts something it attracts educational investors where they come to yourself to the academies and and your child might be in the academy but there is an education to support them so they just don't become a footballer without not or they just don't end up with their knowledge in their foot they have to also learn about their country and their resources and what they can create it will also um obviously apart from the educational facilities i believe that there could be other things that it will attract in every region to discover more talent but the point is we're trying to breed athletes world-class stars because they contribute to our economy one artist can bring billions home in value through endorsement and many things but we have to start nurturing them now we have to start building all these platforms and bringing them out from ghana and even finding more beyond our borders we have to also think about how we're going to offer this scholarships this exchange programs through partnerships and partner schools with talented students and then work with them so that's for me with sports although i don't spend too much time for sports uh i know that it, it it has a future in ghana especially but let's go to entertainment entertainment for me is very interesting you know we have the likes of some of the greatest artists coming from this country you know and, and we go way back from ocbss when they made it to the international platform but we couldn't protect or secure their royalties because we didn't even build the machine today the new falls have decided to build the right machine for for pushing the publishing act that protects the ip of our content creators i mean you're talking from bloggers to influencers to youtubers authors painters musicians uh music softwares and filmmakers and software licenses all of this we have to protect it we have to claim the royalties and we have to make sure that it's circulating in our economy because they're part of us you know to allow artists to hold on to their catalogs such that they're not sold for patents that's one two we need to build a world-class studio ghana is the black star of africa this studio needs to be in ghana we need to build that studio that Hollywood type studio, that Tyler Perry studio type. And that is going to attract the market from other countries. It's going to boost tourism. It's going to bring people from South Africa, Nigeria, England, Europe, America to come here and make their movies and do their production. And of course, we need to entrust the national security to partner or collaborate with the NCA and the cyber security department to clamp down the piracy completely that's the biggest corruption in this area and i know the likes of all the musicians in this country right now artists and everybody you need this i need it for you too we need to clamp it down so we can get our real residual income our real royalties will come to us without people intersecting or interjecting the funds before it reaches us once we secure our publishing terrain it will elevate our creative industry to deal with international entertainment corporations such as the sony the universal the columbia 
you know, we, we need to partner with them. The iTunes to distribute songs. All the international giants. And talking about creative industry, we can't talk about creative industry without talking about fashion and arts. Now, fashion is important. The way you dress is the way you are dressed. But hey, we have to create a world-class art gallery for the African art and culture. And this comes together. It comes together with the people. You know, you have to mix, mix the two. Create the pattern, the plants, and the production. When I say pattern, I mean... You have to understand what fashion is when you go from couton to textile to um, yard and to the pattern before you bring the shirt or the clothes. And then you have to be able to have industrial power to do more production, excessive production and distribute. This is where I think what our fashion industry needs to go. You know, having power of production and power of distribution by using the cotton right and get the shirts out. This final pillar shall be managed monitored and evaluated by the Ministry of Tourism. I'm now bringing you to the end of my presentation and I stand for three different things. So is the new force. It's equity, equality and empowerment. Every individual deserves the opportunity to thrive regardless of their background, gender or circumstance. We are here to foster a society where every voice from different abled to be to the underprivileged everybody have to be heard where every talent is nurtured and every dream has to have a chance to become a reality this is our commitment the new force to create a new Ghana where equity equality and empowerment are the norms paving the way for a country that is forward, that is inclusive, just and truly a transformation. Let us move. Let us move forward together. And with this vision, united in our re resolve to build a brighter future, a more equitable future for all, for one Ghana, one people, and one nation. Thank you very much for tonight. I would like to um, bring Kafui back. Um, maybe I, I need to talk about the 10-year plan, which is the seven the non-negotiables. The seven non-negotiables. And um, how have you been all night? Well, I should be asking you, uh, first of all, that's a masterful job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Two hours on your feet explaining your vision to the people of Ghana. And there's a lot of uh, reaction and feedback across the portals. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of plugging into to find out exactly what your, your vision is. And I want to say thank you for giving the people the opportunity to hear what is in your mind for thank the people you. of Ghana. Thank you. And that wraps up our very historic first ever virtual policy launch by Nana Kwame Periaku um, from the New Force Movement. Keep it uh, going. My name is Kafui Day. And have a good evening. It's 97 days to election 2024. God bless. Well, thank you very much once again, Ghana. I really appreciate you for this moment. And I would like to leave you with my 10-year, the seven non-negotiable principles that will build this country and beyond Ghana borders. Enjoy the vision. And I'm here to serve you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Love you, Ghana. Thank you.